Hi, Karen. Hello, Miss Vicky. You doing, Rob? Glad you're here, man. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was good. It's a good carb day. Lots of carbs, good times. The day after Thanksgiving was pretty good because, you know, the Hogs won. The Razorbacks won, and, you know, I'm a very big fan. And then the next day I got to enjoy everyone having their uh, crazy days and great games, close games. And <clears throat> so, and it was great to be with family and watch those games and have a lot of fun and enjoy some food together. Hey, Sammy. For sure. Nice day outside, and what I've been doing is spending it in the attic to the youth hall, because we're still trying to get everything back in place after the renovations and building shelves, and I'm looking forward to being able to get everything in order up there. Thank you, Henry, yeah, we will definitely lift Mark up today. <clears throat> ah, Patricia. You got it, Robert. Big Rob, we will lift you up. Give everybody just a few more. Join us. And um, got my advent wreath here. And, and before we worship, I'm going to go ahead and light one of our candles. You know, as we go through Advent, what we're really talking about is how do we connect to the light and the darkness. <clears throat> so we're uh, uh, had our first Advent re-service, and Sydney and Andrew helped me last night. It was really neat to get the Advent wreath back out and and just remember to connect to that light and these readings that we're having during uh, Advent that just push us uh, to the light. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so our, our reading today is the Gospel of Matthew, and it's Matthew four eighteen through twenty two. Uh, if you want to open up that and have it with our Bibles, but I will begin us with our Advent prayer um, for week one of Advent. Let us pray. Eternal God, as we await the coming of our Savior, give us the courage to hope. Give us grace to see your plans of redemption for our lives, for this community, and for the world. Through Jesus Christ, the source of our redemption and hope. Amen. <clears throat> so we will begin our Order of Noonday service on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. 
Thanks for being here with me. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saying Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Again, our reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew four eighteen through 22. As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And they were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. The gospel according to Matthew. Now, <clears throat> there's a, a, a way of doing Bible study where you meditate on a word or, or phrase. And I've done this gospel reading several times with many, many different groups. And, and you're supposed to pick out a word or phrase that, that kind of sits with you and you know, kind of talks to your heart. And it's always immediately. And uh, I'm always, you know, inspired by the disciples here. You know, you got uh, Simon, who's going to be Peter, and um, Andrew, and James, and John. And they just immediately go and follow Jesus. It just makes me think uh, how, how special Jesus must have been. You know, he talks to Peter, and I, when I gave the um, pray and play bag, bags out to the kids, I put a little rock in there. Everything had a symbol, not a rock. I put rocks in there, prayer rocks, but I also put this uh, square cube. And I talked about how Peter is the cornerstone, and God used him as a cornerstone, and that God can use them as cornerstone as well. And Peter did it immediately. And... I think to myself immediately how special that is because there's not much I ever want to do immediately. There's a lot of things in my life that I want to do slothly uh, where I don't want to go and do it, uh, but there's not a lot of things I want to do immediately. So it had to be something special. And what I like about it for us is how God can use us um, and how that immediate uh, response by the disciples makes me, that's kind of my cornerstone of my faith, if they were immediately ready to go and do and follow Jesus as his disciple. Uh, that meant that he really was doing amazing things. And if they were willing to do that, and they were willing to give up everything and follow him, then I hold that in my heart so that when I am doubting or I'm thinking, you know, uh, do I want to be your disciple today, God? Uh, the disciples doing it immediately reminds me, yes, I want to. Now, there's a lot of things in our life that uh, make us want to be sloth-like and not do things. And, you know, we've got TV, we've got, you know, entertainment out the wazoo, and you go, ah, maybe I don't need to go help today. I, I'm just going to sit here and watch this movie. And I think that's something just for today in our lives. But it just so happens, 
I was reading Amos in another Advent study, and Amos was complaining about the same thing back in uh, Bible times, where he was saying, there's so many things that people are doing, they're forgetting that we're supposed to be connected to God, you know, connecting to the light. There's a lot of things that want us to go dark, uh, but Jesus wants to lead us to the light. And so when I hear this immediately, I may not immediately be able to run out and do exactly what God is calling me to do, but when I connect to the light and I have God's light in my heart, when he does call me to immediately help my neighbor in some way or immediately uh, help someone with a question that they have about their faith or immediately want me to go and pray about something in my life, I'll be ready for it because when I'm connected to the light, uh, I'm able to go. When it goes out, boy, I'm really ready to go be sloth-like. <laughs> so I call this, you know, make the cornerstone uh, the light of Christ in your life and be ready when he's going to call to immediately share his love in the world. And if you have any prayer requests, please Put them in the comments and we will lift them up. But we will continue uh, on page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Lord, we lift up to you those commended to our prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, our clergy, Billy, Joanna, Michael, Patricia, Susan, and Stuart. We pray for our staff and vestry, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Igreja Episcopal Anglicana in Brazil. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Good Shepherd in Little Rock, Grace in Wynn, and the Diocesan Department of Finance. For peace and an end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for all of our staff, but especially we pray for Tim Allen, our organist and choir master today. We pray for all of our parish ministries, but we especially pray for St. Mark's ushers today. We pray for the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those in the military, especially Megan, Sam, Breen, Marshall, Garrett, and Kyle. We pray for those families expecting children, especially the Whitbecks. We pray for all parishioners who are in need, sick, or homebound, and for those commended to our prayers, Cole, Betsy, Craig, Mary Sue, Suzanne, Adam, Rusty, Seal, Judy, Barbara, Sean, Billy, John, Becky, Ellen, Wes, Eva, Tom, Miley, Dan, John Bangert and John Jones, Sarah, the Satterfields, Philip, Ellis, Brian, Rita, David, Ken, Janet, Ray, and Dan, we pray for those celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries. We pray for those who have died. We pray for Bill Sneed and Chanel Westerhide. <clears throat> we 
We lift up in our prayers Molly and Cindy. Lord, we lift up to you Rob Holitick. Be with him, guide him, fill his heart with your love and prayer and hope. Help him to feel your peace. Be with him today and every day. We pray for Sharon and Jean. We pray for all those, both human and animal, who are cold this winter. We lift up to you, Mark. We pray everyone has a positive day. Sorry, everyone. We lift up those things in our hearts that we have not or cannot name. Be with us, guide us, and point us to your light so that we may be your light in the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you all for being here with me. I hope you have a great day. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll let you take this light with you. And also, I always tell the kids about it, but you know the smoke that's coming off after we extinguish the candles symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And know that the Holy Spirit is with you today and every day. God's peace. Bye.